Recovery is stupendous. Achievable. Hope. Freedom. 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 Empowering. It's unique to everyone. It's a journey, not a destination. Getting a new lease on life. It's finding restoration after you fall down. Recovery is having the freedom to enjoy life. For me, it was finding a way to really love myself. My recovery is possible in part because of my own sense of purpose. Hello and welcome to another Recovery Talks podcast. I'm Andy Daniel, social media coordinator with MPN, and I'm here with Matt Furlong. He's been a therapeutic foster and adoptive parent for 17 years. He's a member of Montana's Peer Network and chair of the Lewis and Clark County Behavioral Health Local Advisory Council. Welcome, Matt. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. So I've been a therapeutic foster adoptive parent for about 17 years. But uh, before that, I was a construction worker. I went I went to school for construction. What am I doing in the mental health area? And just like many of the people from Montana Peer Network, we all have a story. And my story starts out when I was a youth. And I was uh, in and out of group homes and foster care because I had a really, I had a real difficult time in my family connecting and building an attachment with my adopted family. I, I was adopted and I, I started out life as a baby adopted. Um, but anyways, um, through that, through the experiences of being in a group home and in a treatment center, I met a person at one of the treatment centers and the person somehow understood me a little more than anyone else. And later on in life, I found out uh, who he was and and that he was a kid who uh, struggled in life and he was in an institution. And that was my first experience of what peer support was as somebody who's had a similar experience. And uh, because it was during my youth when I found, when I struggled so much, I've really had my heart set on you. So you've been instrumental in the youth and family peer support discussion forum or or task force that we've put together. Can you talk a little bit about that group? Sure. So like I just said, I I really have a passion for youth, but um, and and that's because I, I think we have the most opportunity to help people in the long haul when we can reach them in their youth. But if we're going to reach our youth, we also need to reach their families. Um, We're a whole person, and we're also surrounded by our whole family and the the community that surrounds our family. So I've been, as a therapeutic foster adoptive parent, I found out that when I was helping the kids that were in my care, I recognized that the best thing I could do to help and love them is to love their parents. And that didn't mean accepting all of the behaviors that came with them as they were okay, but recognizing that the parents needed support just as much as children did. And so I see that in order to help kids, we really need to help their families as well. That kind of started me thinking on how to develop a support network around families. And as I had gone through the foster care system, I noticed that the children had a lot of wraparound support, but that parents didn't seem to have wraparound support. And a lot of times kids had a lot more struggles at school when they were entering the foster care system. And a lot of us that have tried to help kids there weren't really sure how to do that. And that's when, uh, when I was working with the Montana Peer Network to help develop the peer support certification in the state, I recognized how much of a gift that a peer support certification for our youth and for our families could help make a difference in those two areas where we've traditionally uh, had other supports but not the lived experience support. So can you tell me a little bit about like who's on that task force and sort of what the vision is for it? That's a great question. And I have, I have a short answer, but it's not a full answer. (laughs) And that's because 
it kind of started out of thin air and it's progressed so quickly. I, I'm having a hard time keeping up with everybody that's on it. But what we do have is we have people from Montana's Peer Network. We have Child and Family Services. We have Montana State University's Extension. We have CASA. And we have people that are working in the art, and that's Addiction Recovery Treatment Court Program that are part of it. And I'm sure I'm leaving somebody out, and that's what I mean about it's growing so fast. I can't keep up with everybody who wants to see this come about, and that's an exciting thing. Since we've been meeting, it's kind of like this has been a need for so long, and other people have been thinking about it too. And so people are coming to the task force with a lot of great ideas on how we can act and actually do some things it's it's gone from a discussion to hey let's start building a toolkit let's start developing structure and so we're we're in that phase of developing structure around this profession one of the things that you do also is that you facilitate some support groups that are centered around family and foster care support right Tell me, like, how did you get involved in that? Or, you know, what kinds of things do you do in those support groups? Yes, that's a good question. After I started getting involved in mental health advocacy and other people found out that I was somebody who was willing to help and support, my phone started ringing a lot. And when I was uh, first a foster parent, I was involved in a support group. And it was like one of the only times that we could get a break and and connect with other people that understood what it was like being a foster parent. Um, A lot of our kids in the foster care system have difficulties in our family. They didn't all have that same excitement as we did with our foster kids. And so some of the foster care support group was more of a network of support than our own family. Can you tell me what, like, your ultimate goal would be with this task force, the discussion forum? Like, what what would you like to see happen? Ultimately, it would be great, first of all, that we start looking outside of the traditional supports we've always had and think more creatively in what can we come up with when the traditional supports aren't working. So the task force can really help see some of the work that's going on around the country and take some things away from those other models that are out there, other programs that are out there. And some of the work that we're doing is researching other states' peer support for youth and families, but we're also looking at other things like mentoring, coaching, liaisons, those that are in the gaps that are working with families that aren't necessarily peer support. The task force is looking at what do we want to do here in Montana. We have like a a list of different things that we can pick and choose from when we're developing it and maybe take the best of everything that's out there and put it into one great package for, for Montana. And so my... My vision would be that uh, the task force develops those programs that ha- that can reach our kids here in Montana more effectively. We have so many kids in the rural areas of our state, but even in a, more of the cities in, in that, we still need more tools to give our child protection workers. Uh, also, in our school system in Montana, by developing more tools and, and uh, supports in school, we can help more kids feel more included and have more options for support. Uh, you know, we look towards, you know, programs or models, but we're missing out on a natural sort of support, which is a connection between two people or a group a group that comes together with a like experience and 
builds each other up. And so that's where the vision of peer support really uh, root is peer support is that we have two people have something really in common and we can connect on a level different than two people that are very different and don't have a lot in common and, you know, share successes and struggles and through that, you know, lean on each other, but also build from each other's successes. Peer support in the professional world is a person who has an experience and they've not just lived with it, but they've found ways to overcome and find them and reach their full potential with what they are experiencing, what they've experienced in the past. And so they're in a place now to help somebody who's in the trenches like they had been at one point with our youth that are in the trench trying to get out, trying to find uh, a way to wellness. Our other youth that have found that are a really great asset that we're not really tapping into right now. And then for the family and, and parental uh, peer support, it's the same thing. Parents that found tools for resiliency and and self-care can really be an asset to another parent that's still trying to find their way. And and in doing that, we can keep more families together and create a network of people that have the, that kind of support to lean back on. Can you tell me a little bit about like your personal experience as a foster parent and adoptive parent and, you know, like how you got support or didn't get support that's kind of influenced uh, where you are right now? Uh, my wife and I started out as a therapeutic foster parent because we were first a regular foster parent and then found out later we needed more resources and support than we had access to. And through that, we were able to get really good support from one of the providers in our community. Later, after we've been doing it for a while, uh, that support changed and we were no longer able to get the same level of support. Uh, we had to reach out for people who had been in places without the right kind of support. And so they were they became our support. We had a group of foster parents who supported each other. And they became that support and, and I think and that's a, another reason why I have such a passion for peer support is you know we don't always get to depend on something that's there for us and support as it's as if it's concrete things change and we have to learn and have more options for resources and I think I guess that's probably the main thing is we have to lean on other people and with those similar experiences when the other supports that are in place are not working for us. We had good experiences in the system. And, you know, I know the system gets a, a bad rap because, you know, it doesn't always give people what they need. But, you know, it all comes down to people. And uh, if we're working communally and making connections with other people, we're going to find more opportunities for help than if we're kind of broken up and, and depending on systems and pro and programs and organizations to meet our needs. Those kind of things are great, but it really takes people in there who can bridge those gaps and help people find the available resources. And when something isn't there, that there's people standing by each other helping them. What's been like the most challenging thing about figuring out how to do this peer support with parents and youth? I think part of it is getting the buy-in from providers. A lot of times peer support is something that is unknown, so it kind of is faced as like it's a threat to, to the models we've always had when it shouldn't be because it's an assist. It helps people get from struggling and need a support to services. It doesn't interfere with services. Yeah, and the other piece is that parents are not always open to 
ask for help or when they're even being told to get some help, they don't want to engage with help. So one of the hard parts is parents being able to accept that they need help and, and becoming vulnerable enough to the suggestion that when they do need help, that they would open up to a peer support or another resource just to accept. Can you tell me something about like some successes that you've seen? I mean, I, I realize that this isn't, you know, youth and family peer support isn't like a standard kind of thing like recovery peer support is right now in Montana. But in your experience working with uh, families and and youth, what what are some things that were really like inspirational or, or really successful that you've seen? I think the, the basically the many stories of a transformed life is by far the high points of this peer support with foster care and family care. And so support group that we do for parents, we have parents that come and, and when they start asking for help and their kids start seeing you as a positive person in their life and parents that were coming years ago, their kids see it as a safe base. And I think, I mean, more or less myself and the other facilitator we both have our own lived experience. That's what we offer. The reward, I guess, is seeing people's lives changed and knowing how somebody to call or somebody to come and reach out to when they're having challenges. And the other success is when we were doing the foster care support group, we have been invited to graduations, weddings of the foster care kids that we, with their families, we support it. And that's really a neat thing. You know, you've uh, impacted somebody to the point where they are inviting you to successes, life celebrations, because you were a part of their life. Is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners? I'd just like to say that peer support and the family of Montana Peer Network has really become a family to each other. And I hear that over and over in other support groups I'm in that it's a family network and that's the kind of network that a lot of people who don't have family really need and that's why i believe that montana peer network can help us get to the point where we have peer support for youth and families because it's really developing a family support network for people who don't have one and that's the need people need connection they need family somebody that that really cares. And that's the return I get. And I'm sure that's the return you all get. Is just knowing that there's genuine care and we're all in it together. Wonderful. Well, thanks for joining me today, Matt. Thanks. I really enjoyed being on. Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery works. Recovery is possible. Recovery is possible. <laughs> recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery is possible.